Welcome everybody. Just give you a brief update on what's going on here at the local union office. Um, Pell courses, uh, everybody has applied now. Anybody that has applied, we've uh, sent a letter out telling them that they've been accepted. Um, and LOAs have been submitted to the plant. They are all put into chronos right now. Port Elgin is now sending uh, confirmation letters back via email to the email that each member had uh, submitted. Please read the email because you must respond to Port Elgin directly with the questions that they're asking you, mainly about your vaccination uh, proof and your, if you have any food allergies. Also, um, if you're in, when you're on Port Elgin, if you're on layoff, you will have to claim it as a 40-hour work week if you're on unemployment. Please report 40 hours wages, and um, Unifor National will be, your, will be your employer at that time, and next year you will receive a T4 for that week's wages. Lounge night, we have a lounge night coming up on April 29th, which will be from 1 p.m. to 1 a.m. It's gonna be an online auction, silent auction. We're raising funds for a Ukrainian family that has come to Canada. There will be a DJ in the evening. I hope to see everybody out. It's a worthwhile cause. Uh, Thames River cleanup will take place on May 14th. The Thames River cleanup this year is being done by uh, the town of Ingersoll and some service groups in conjunction with the Environment Committee of Local 88 and the Thames River cleanup as a whole. It'll take place here at the hall, May 14th. It's a Saturday. You have to come here to sign up and sign the waivers, receive your gloves and bags, and then you'll be sent in different areas to do cleanup. There'll be a barbecue back here when it's over for everybody to come back and socialize. Uh, with all the changes and guidelines and in-person meeting and events, the hall is uh, starting to see a lot more um, requests for rentals and usage. Um, the only other thing is the election. Yesterday, nominations closed. There's a list on the boards and on our website. There will be an advanced poll on April 22nd, and then the election itself will take place at the general membership meeting in April. And if there is a runoff, it'll take place at the May general membership meeting Hello, and thank you for watching this video. Just a house, clean, house cleaning item to start in, ref, in reference to the Green Shield Child Care. Anyone who submits child care for reimbursement to Green Shield, you need to do this preferably every month or worst case, every quarter. Currently, we have 22 people in the plant right now who just submitted their child care expenses for the past year all at once. It is a taxable benefit that means some of these people, next pay stub would be zero dollars because they're going to take all the tax money back. We have worked it out this year that they're going to divide it into four equal payments. However, in the future, they're not going to do that. So start getting your child care payments in either monthly or worst case, quarterly. Um, yesterday, Bill Harkness did his um, Tuesday video, which was on Thursday, and he went over the numbers. I'm just going to round them off just so everybody understands what's going on. The numbers per shift for the bright drop are pretty close to 450 on days, 400 on afternoons, and 400 for midnights. Whatever we have in the plant working for trades, they are going to retain every tradesperson they can, so all the trades jobs are safe. Uh, there are a couple of questions on why we have more people on days. Mainly, there's about 20 people currently that work in pilot and launch. There always are. And usually QC also have a couple teams that work straight uh, days as well, so that's the reason there's about 50 extra. Those numbers are pretty well the bare minimum. They are gonna add more jobs as we get closer, uh, for, especially for in the areas of quality and all that and process strengtheners. So that's the numbers right around now. It's gonna be about 1,250 people uh, to run the bright drop and then trades on top of that. We hope to have all kinds of answers on this video for people on the floor. We have not said a lot. There's been a lot of meetings going on with the company and we really hope to settle a whole bunch of issues for everyone today so they know what's gonna happen. I'll, I'm going to answer a lot of the questions today, but unfortunately we don't have all the answers. There's been a couple of curveballs in the last couple of days, so we are going to do another video to clarify everything the last week of April. But I'm going to try and get most people a lot of the answers that we can do as of right now. Uh, postings. We are hoping to start the posting process next week. It will be all the team leaders in the plant, and as we stated before, you must currently be a team leader to become a team leader for the first round of Bright Drop postings. Um, we are working on a posting process for all production jobs that will likely start the first or second week of May. We are hoping to post all three shifts at once, A, B, and C. We are not 100% sure on the timelines for the second or third shift, 
but it looks like we will have all three shifts fully running at some point in 2023. Um, all team leader jobs will go up first. They will stay up for two weeks. Um, and you currently must be a team leader in order to post. If you're thinking about posting to a team leader job, watch the whole video before you post. We have, some, we have an important update about posting. We want to be clear on two separate things on the postings. The Bright Drop postings are going to be posted by department, but they are open to everyone. Regardless of where, of where you're currently working, you can post to any Bright Drop opening anywhere in the plant. So for instance, if you're currently in welding, you can post to any posting you want. We are not doing departmental postings. Same if you're in paint, you can post anywhere in the plant to any of the production jobs. Secondly, the postings are going to go up by seniority in all instances. The big difference here, the health center will not be able to check 1,200 different people taking postings. Every job that you post to is going to be approved by seniority, period. Once you will be confirmed, and then the next round of jobs, the next, uh, we're going to go by departments for postings. So it's going to start likely in QC, go to materials, and we're going to work our way down to assembly. Um, once you're confirmed, you're good. When, upon your return to work, if you are unable to perform the job you posted to, you will enter the medical placement procedure. So we cannot check 1,200 people's medicals and everything else. Whoever's the most senior person is going to get the job. We'll worry about who can do the job and who can't because there will be some people likely with restrictions. They're just going to go into the medical placement procedure. The hope is once all the team leader jobs are done, we will then start in early May with all the production jobs. Right now, that's just a tentative plan. We'll have everything set up for the last video or for the video in April on how this is going to go. But there will be a specific order you can post. We're not going to go and post 800 jobs all at once. We'll just go by departments so everybody can take a good look and see um, where the jobs are, what the jobs are going to be. The company is working on a video right now. We hope to have it out next week. Um, the video, you would be able to go on a computer. You'll have to come in the plant to do it. They do not want to post the uh, video live because of competition, everybody else being able to see it. But we hopefully will show it for the next three weeks. It'll show a whole picture of the plant. And then they're going on to teams of what it looks like already at KUKA and what they think it's going to look like in the plant. And you'll be able to break it down by line and team to see what the jobs are going to look like. Um, for some of the jobs, they won't have it. They'll be just seats just to show you what the jobs will look like. And for material handling, the best that we're going to do is hopefully get some pictures and show you exactly how big this truck looks, um, especially beside a person. There's some people in here who have never been material handlers who likely want to be a material handler, but we, we just want to give you a scope on how big of these, these side bodies are and these other parts of these trucks that you're going to be moving up and down the lines. It might not be for everyone, but we'll have that all sorted out by the end of April. Okay, the next uh, subject will be recalls. There have been a lot of rumors on how long these layoffs will last and how long until everyone is coming back. The tentative plan right now would show all the team leaders from hopefully all three shifts back in November. That's if we post all three shifts, which we hope we will be. They would all come back in November, start getting their lines made up, working together, get the parts bins, and just basically get the line layout going. We are working on our scenario right now to bring everybody back in December. This would get everybody's benefits kicked back in for January 1st and also get some uh, money, full-time wages back in your pockets before Christmas. Um, this is not finalized yet. We are still talking to the company, so I don't want to sound too premature, but we'll have this all figured out before the end of uh, April for our next video. This will be very controversial because we are talking about rotating layoffs. Um, there's a lot of good reasons for it. If we follow the contract as it currently states, we would post 450 jobs and bring the 450 most senior people back. You can make a lot of good arguments for that as well. Obviously, they would get full-time money the whole time and not be rotating. However, if we posted 450 jobs and you're around number 200, you have very, very good seniority in our plant with 12 or 1,300 jobs. If we post 450, there's a very good chance that you are going to get stuck in a job that is not really good. And then we work you guys for two or three months, start bringing the second shift back and post all the secondary, all the second shift jobs. You can't post because you're locked in. Either that or you don't post and they're going to put you on the trim lines and the final lines in assembly because someone's got to do those jobs for the first shift. We think it's better if everybody gets the job based on their seniority that they want. And I know some people are going to be upset, but we are looking at uh, rotating the jobs right now. Again, it's not set, but that's our plan. We are going to go second and third shift at some point in 2023. The bright drops are selling like crazy. There's huge demand for them. They are doing everything they can to get these trucks three shifts 
likely six days, six days a week as quick as possible. So this isn't like the last time we rotated. It's not going to be long lived. Um, very much understand that you're not going to get full wages when some of the senior people think they should be. I get that. But this will give everybody full wages. And with our plan, you would work two weeks off for two weeks, everybody in the plant. So it does kick people's benefits back in, which is hugely important, especially for the young families. But we are still working through that and we'll be able to explain the entire system at the end of April. Okay, our next topic, anyone wishing to retire or leave CAMI or take a personal leave, such as an educational leave, um, this also applies to all the former EMD members. We've talked to a lot of you guys one-on-one. -on -one. Um, what we talked to you about hasn't changed, but the, time limbs, the timelines have changed. Anybody interested in retiring, quitting, um, taking a leave, we are going to have a meeting next Tuesday, April 12th, in the auditorium at the CAMI plant. Um, you're going to want to attend that meeting to understand exactly your options if you are looking to retire or looking to quit or take a school or personal leave. Um, at, it'll be next Tuesday in the auditorium, 7 a.m. for the C-shift people, 2 p.m. for the afternoon people, and 3 p.m. for the day shift. Again, this is strictly for production people, all the trades people who have a job, you're going to be working 40 hours a week. Um, if any team leader jobs do come up before next Tuesday, we are asking you not to post for those jobs until you attend the meeting next Tuesday. But that's the time. So next Tuesday, if you can please make it, it's going to be extremely important. Anybody, once the layoffs start on May 1st, anybody who is going to take a maternity or parental leave, um, congratulations on that, but also make sure you talk to our benefit reps. Your claim will automatically be switched over to maternity parental top-up, but we need to inform the company. So if you're, if you're thinking a guy or girl on taking maternity slash parental leave, make sure you talk to the benefits uh, when it happens. The next subject will be vacation. We are working on a vacation plan with the company. We thought we were going to have this done. Uh, but we've thought of a couple other things. It will be done by the end of April, but right now we are working on a plan that would see no summer shutdown this year. Um, we're not in the plant, by far the vast majority in the plant. Therefore, we've talked to the company about not having to burn 80 hours just because it's a normal shutdown period. We are gonna continue to work on this and we'll have an update at the end of April on the next video. If you are planning any out of uh, country trips or even out of province trips, you probably want to take vacation. You could get yourself in a lot of trouble with the government and get caught with uh, EI, have your claim denied, and there goes your sub as well. So right now, if you're planning on taking a trip at all or want to use vacation from July 1st till December 1st, absolutely talk to your bulls right now, talk to your whoever your people are, and lock in your vacation right now. It's unlimited. If 1,000 people want to go off the first week of July, they'll take 1,000 people, but you can already lock in certain weeks if you want to. But again, there will be no summer shutdown in all likelihood for the first two weeks of July. So we'll, we'll give you an update, which will be very important um, as we get closer to the end of uh, April in our next video. And okay, in closing, at the end of April, we will say goodbye to our Equinox. It will always be considered our Equinox. That, tr that truck took us through some tough times. When most of the industry was slow, our truck continued to sell. It kept us on six days a week for years and also provided jobs to Oshawa when they were, during their layoffs when our overflow program came in. The Equinox began here in 2004 and we've made just over three million of them. It has put a lot of food on our plates. It brought us a lot of friends, it brought us a lot of new hires and over a thousand retirees. But maybe the greatest attribute the Equinox did was provide the opportunity to showcase our members' skill and abilities to help us land the new product, the Bright Drop. We will become the first assembly plant in Canada to mass produce electric vehicles. It is drawing major interest, not only from GM, but also from our governments and many other outside groups. E-commerce last year was over $4 trillion in North America, and that market continues to grow. Our plant's future looks very, very promising. I have no doubt at some point in 2023, we will be on three shifts. GM will, again, will begin once, once again, hiring again, and we will be back to working six days a week. The fact that we are all doing this while helping the earth go green is also a major factor. 
We have a lot to be proud of since 1989, and our future looks very promising. I think our plant is just starting to get its second wind. The future isn't coming, it's here. It's electric, it's green, and I want to thank all of you for making this happen.